and uh, I, I would believe what the man had to say rather than uh, what people uh, thought that he might have said as time went on. Well, anyhow, there were others. Uh, you wonder why in the big I, a fight that uh, Guderian had never had, that Guderian wasn't stamped out. Yet, on the other hand, you want to remember uh, that um, he had a respect for Guderian, despite the fact that they went at each other tooth and nail, but he didn't have for Ava Brown's brother-in-law, Fegelein, who was really, uh, in many ways, uh, a person who never should have been a general in the SS. He was about as illiterate as they possibly come. He wasn't very bright. And um, he used to be hanging around in the bunker along with everybody else. But one time he was, wasn't around. And uh, Hitler missed him. And he said, uh, where's Fegelein? And uh, Mueller, the head of the Gestapo, said, well, I don't know, but we can go out and check it out. Hitler said, please do. I want to know why he's not around. Well, they went and found him. He was in his leisure clothes, not in uniforms or anything like that, in his apartment. And next to him, he had a suitcase filled with all kinds of currency. U.S. currency, British currency, he had German currency, Soviet currency, and so on. And uh, Miller had him arrested and brought back to the bunker. Hitler said, you were going to betray me, weren't you? You were going to go away somewhere, particularly with that redhead you have there. And Mueller uh, said, well, um, she could be uh, still there. We can go get her, too, if you want. And uh, Martin Borman, who was a person we knew very, very little about until the war was over, was absolutely furious to think that uh, this person had been arrested. And so they went looking for the girl, and she just disappeared. And they called her the Lek, or uh, the uh, leak. Hitler often talked about the fact that there was a leak and nobody wanted to believe him. But there is no question that British propaganda on the radio and so on would indicate that there was indeed information coming from the bunker. And uh, only those who were in the bunker would have known it. And Hitler had to be correct. And it must be that that gal next to Fegelein had something to do with it. Well anyhow, uh, Fegelein was taken out and shot. Simple as that. And uh, the two shocks that Hitler had was the fact that first, when Goering was down in um, Berchtesgaden, after he had emptied out the Karrenhag, because the Soviets were just about ready to take it over, his hunting lodge north of Berlin, and he had about 10 uh, <laughs> trucks just filled with all Not kinds me. of artwork and everything else to go down there, and he asked Hitler for permission. But once he got there, he knew that it was all over in Berlin, and he sent Hitler a wire, and he said, according to our uh, arrangements, the number two man takes over when the number one man is finished. And he said, I want your permission. Well, when Martin Borman got a hold of that, he turned it around so that Hitler uh, thought that it was a betrayal. And he couldn't believe that Hermann Goering had betrayed him, that he was trying to take over the Third Reich while he was still alive. And so he ordered the SS to arrest him. Well, the SS, of course, never got to it because the war was over by the time anybody did it. And Goering was one step ahead of the Gestapo in that case. He had his own Luftwaffe boys protecting him until the Americans caught up, and that was that. Also, the other person who uh, really upset Adolf Hitler was the fact that Heinrich Himmler, his boy Heinrich, who had uh, been with him since early days, and here he was now uh, trying to make peace with the Allies through Count Volker Bernadotte from Sweden. He couldn't believe, Gehring possibly because he was a dope addict, yes maybe, but not his favorite boy Heinrich, and he was betraying him, he couldn't believe it. Well anyhow, uh, Himmler and uh, Gehring shook him up, he got to the point where he said, I can't believe anybody anymore, it's as simple as that. And of course, uh, with Guderian doing what he did, and these others doing what they did, and Speer saying what he did, and so on, you can believe that Hitler very well would think that, of course. Well, anyhow, uh, he had ordered a number of people out originally from the bunker. They could leave if they wanted to. But Ava Brown came back, and she said, I want to be with you. That's where I belong. And I think at this stage of the game, when we know that we don't have much time, I think you owe it to me to allow me to be married to you. And Hitler, uh, well, he, he didn't know what to say, and finally said, well, all right, which stunned a lot of people, because he always said that he was married to Germany. Well, they went out, and uh, Goebbels did. He went out and found a justice of the peace, brought in, and they went through the stupidity of this 
questioning about whether or not they were Aryans and all that sort of stuff. Now, how are you going to save the Fuhrer? Are you 100% Aryan and so on? I mean, they knew damn well that that was his program. They certainly weren't going to change that around. And so, uh, that's the way the questioning went. And they finally had the uh, chap marry them. And uh, when it was all over, they allowed him about a half an hour to enjoy himself. And uh, when he went out, he was shot. Not by the SS or anything like that, but the Soviets were that close. Wait, who was shot? He had shot? no chance to rejoin his unit. He was part of the Volksturm. And uh, who was so shot? he went. The, the he had a good meal before he went. The who priest was, was shot, right? Oh, the priest was shot. No, no, the, uh, the justice of the peace was shot. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. The person was, who married them. Yeah, but he had no chance. I mean, you know, everybody was closing in on him. Well, anyhow, um, Hitler uh, uh, passed out. Uh, Why didn't you just stay with him then? Huh? Why didn't he well, just he didn't know. Oh. I mean, he, he wanted to go back and he figured what the heck, there wouldn't be any problems. So, anyhow, um, they had a little party, and uh, very little actually. And Hitler uh, uh, said to Ava Brown, well, uh, I think uh, what we should do is retire now. I've given uh, Trottle Junga all my information, who was also stunned by the fact that when Hitler sat down to write his will, it was nothing more than the same old garbage he'd been coming out with since year one. And she thought that maybe Hitler would come out with something different about why he did certain things and how he handled the Jewish problem and everything else. But no, he's the same old Hitler. And uh, she just couldn't believe it. But she made three copies, and they were to be sent. Martin Bormann instructed that they be sent to the Grand Admiral Dernitz, who was now going to be the second Fuhrer of the Third Reich. He had no uh, interest in doing this. He didn't even know he was being selected for it. But because he was uh, a person in the Navy, he was a person that Hitler uh, could trust, in his opinion, because nobody in his entourage could he trust. After all, Hess had flown to England, and Goebbels and or uh, Goering and um, uh, Himmler had betrayed him, and so on. Speer had walked out on him, and who's he have left? Well, he certainly uh, wasn't going to give it to Goebbels because Goebbels had planned this whole thing for a great Gottendammerung. Berlin would go up in flames, and with it would be the Führer, and he wanted to go with his Führer, and so on. Well, not everybody felt that way, but that's the way it was going to be. And everybody was tensely waiting for Hitler to put himself out. And so they went into their room, into their bedroom, and uh, Travel Junger was on the step with the Goebbels' children. And uh, all of a sudden there was a shot, and uh, the little boy said, Oh, bullseye! And she said, Yes, that was a bullseye, all right. And uh, Kempka and Guncha. I went in, Kempka being the very faithful aide de camp, picked up the flowers that had fallen over. There was Hitler on the sofa uh, in this fashion, uh, arm down and head down. He was bleeding, of course. What he had done was take a pill and shot himself because he didn't trust Dr. Morell's bullets, or magic bullets, whatever you want to call them. And um, he'd had his dog, Blondie, poisoned just to and see if those. Huh? Us, and, and it ran around wild. Because he no, no, he didn't run. No, they, no, no. Blondie was definitely poisoned. No, but he, he didn't die immediately, and he suffered. He suffered, yes, of course he did. And when they went to bury him, when Guncha went up to bury him, uh, the little uh, puppies were still hanging on her teeth, and he had to shoot them in the head because they were still alive. Oh, and uh, the other two dogs were shot right away without any chance. But Heather didn't trust him, so that's the way he went. Ava Brown was curled up on the sofa. Uh, she had taken the poison, and many people think before Hitler did. Now, Kempka and Guncha came in. They had gathered 180, uh, shall we say, uh, gallons of gasoline to burn the two bodies. They took them out, and they found a hole, a bomb crater, put it that way, put them side by side, covered them with gasoline, and spent the two or three hours just uh, pouring um, gasoline in on them so that they'd burn. And uh, as a matter of fact, you got to be damn careful. Uh, Guncha had to light a flame and throw it. And they left and went back to the safety of the porch. You might say the little lid over the uh, bunker because Soviet shells were pouring in pretty much uh, on a heavy pace. And uh, they just would run out and pour more gasoline in or throw it in actually rather than pour it. Because that stuff was highly volatile, as you know. Now, the deal is, did the Soviets find the body? Gucha and Kempka said no. They said that they buried it, and then after it burned, and I'm sure it didn't get the same kind of burning that you would get if you went to a crematorium. They have the air 
airflow and everything else to see this done right. And uh, it takes a heck of a time to burn a body, but a lot of it was burned to powder without any question. However, they said they picked up what was left in a blanket and reburied it, tamped it down, that was that. Now the Soviets insisted that they found it. Then they came out with propaganda about the fact uh, that uh, Adolf Hitler was a weirdo, uh, that he only had one testicle and so on, but that is propaganda because most of the doctors, and Hitler had all six of them there, different times, including morale, <coughs> and never said that he was a Menorcan. Also, they said that Joseph Stalin insisted that part of his skull be brought back to the Kremlin so that he could use it as an ashtray. This is all nonsense. What's yes. a Menorcan? A one, one testicle. Didn't have two. And so, uh, anyhow, uh, these stories went on. But the Soviets insist that yes, they did find it, and you can get a tape, whatever happened to Adolf Hitler, in which they beautifully outlined what was supposed to happen to him, but they also have uh, flukes in it. Like they said, well, they buried him here. And then they come out with these metal detectors, and they look for him, and there's no body, no yeah, nothing. I've seen that. Huh? Yeah, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. that on the video, I've seen it on TV. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so, uh, you can take your choice, gentlemen, if you think the Soviets found that's your way of going. I personally don't feel that they did. And Lord uh, Dacron doesn't feel that they did, and there are a lot of others who don't. And I will go along with what Guncha and Kempka had to say because uh, they were pretty much up on things. And mm -hmm. I had boys from Haverford meet them at different times, and they told the same story. But that's the way it goes. I mean, you can take your choice. Well, anyhow, uh, as far as Hitler's death is concerned, that was the end of Hitler, it was the end of the Third Reich, and it was the end of National Socialism. And he so said that. That was it, period. He said there'll never be another side National Socialist in the way of what I had. He said there may be people who will follow and might have similar ideas, but they'll never have the same. And he said it's gone, it's finished, it's done. The Germans had their chance and they blew it. Well, we do know that those ideas still float around, not only in Germany but elsewhere. We've, we've seen that. Dernitz tried to do what he could, and he brought the war to an end uh, nine days later. And uh, as you, you know, the war wasn't over. Huh? What, the war wasn't over when Hitler killed himself. No, no, it, it went on. It, well, it was over as far as any practicality right. is concerned. Right. But uh, no, it continued to go until Dernitz actually signed the surrender, and that was it. And then, for those of you who are in my Holocaust course, you will know what happened at Nuremberg for those who survived. It's interesting to know that only one really survived that, and that was Goering, because Goebbels committed suicide. Hitler committed suicide, Himmler committed suicide, and uh, they just finished, that's all, yeah. You know Schindler? Huh? You know the, the guy Schindler? Yeah. You know how he was a Nazi? Was he a member of Trump? Awesome. No. No. No, he wasn't. He wasn't called either. No. Uh -huh. But uh, it's interesting how Himmler died when he was running around after Hitler was out. He was trying to get Ger uh, Dernitz to accept him. Dernitz wouldn't do it. He said he didn't want any part of somebody like that in his government. And uh, the British caught him, and he was dressed in a Luftwaffe sergeant's outfit. And uh, if it hadn't been for one guy behind the desk saying to his British officer, who was nothing more than a lieutenant or a captain, I forget which, he said, you know, if you had a mustache on that fellow and you put pins and ends on it, you'd look just like the right field. And when Himmler heard that, and the uh, officer said, hey, you? You, who thinks he's a loaf of a man, I won't talk to you. He popped the pill in his mouth, and in 15 seconds he was gone. They, they all carried those pills, those cyanide capsules. Didn't, at the end of the movie, you know um, the movie uh, with Schind Schindler's List? Yeah. Remember at the end of the movie where he, he says, I'm a wanted man? Yeah. yeah. Did, like, well, he, he thought he would be. He thought he would be well, wanted. sure. Because he... Because he was a businessman, he was doing business with all the biggies. Well, gentlemen, I held you longer than I should. And so, uh, let's gather around tomorrow and uh, be down in the ball hall. And uh, Harlan says he'll bring in the donuts. Jim, what are you going to do? Jim? Last day. How you doing there, Jimmy? What's going on? Last day. So are you taping? Yeah, it's going. Come on, Jimmy. We're rocking and rolling. <laughs> We're going off the front. Let's go. <laughs> Look out. It's a good thing I got my helmet on. <laughs>
Right. Yeah, so you turn it off in the series. <laughs> turn it off. It's, it's class. Yeah.